Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Michael Gimity, and today we're going to be going through how to mill a new denture on your Ivoclar PM7. Now we're going to be going through your monolithic options. So this is going to be from Ivoclar, it's their Ivotion line. So it's a true monolithic denture. And we're going to go through all of the steps you need to go through on your PM7 and on the software in order to actually mill it. So let's start off by opening up our computer and we need to make sure we have our two files, but then we also need to make sure that we have the program mill cam software as well. So for this, for the monolithic Ivotion dentures, we're going to use the bicolor disc option, which are going to be exported from your three shape design software. And you can see here, we got the maxillary and the mandibular one right here. So let's start with the mandibular one. So for these, you can actually use the um, there's uh, little RFID tags on the bottom of these uh, that you can just scan to basically link your job that you're going to be sending on here to your uh, to your printer. Or what we're going to be doing here is we're actually going to be going through and we're going to be creating a new blank. So think of your blank as your unused puck, obviously. Well, this one's used, but imagine this one's unused and that's going to be your blank that you're going to be using for it. And we're going to be going through and we're going to be making a new blank. And then we're going to tag this and attach this to the RFID container, which you'll see in a minute. OK, so we made a new blank. Doesn't matter the shade at all for this because the material properties are the same. So I just always select a one and then we're this, it's going to automatically nest it within the uh, within the puck. Now, what's really important for these is that because these are monolithic, the nesting needs to be done automatically. Okay. If the nesting is moved at all, then the gingival margins will not line up because that blue line that we went through in our software for actually designing this denture is not going to line up to the blue line that's actually on a puck. That blue line is just the delineation between the uh, gingiva and the tooth colored uh, material for your puck. So we've automatically nested it in here, as you can see here for this mandibular denture. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click on the denture itself right here. And there's two settings we have to change. So once I right click on it, you can see on the right side under mill, milling area settings, we have two options. It's processing area offset and conical angle su supplement processing area offset. We're going to put that all the way up to four. The reason for that is a lot of times you can get it to be smaller if you're going to be using, say, a zirconia block or, or a puck, and you're going to be milling multiple sets of restorations on this. You want to conserve as much of this uh, as much of this material as possible. You can't do anything else with these pucks after you've milled a complete denture on them. So we're going to increase that up all the way. And then we're going to set the conical angle supplement to half. So around five degrees for it. And I'll have another video on going through troubleshooting for this because there is one issue you will sometimes run into uh, where it goes through the calculations and spits out something that says we can't do it. But that'll be for another video. This is just assuming everything goes right. So we're going to set those both to those values that we talked about. And then we're going to add the sprue support. So you can see up here on the top right hand corner, we've got edit and we're going to choose these sprues. So what we're going to do is we're going to hover over the, the border of the denture and then you can use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down to move it. So you can see right here that I'm moving these up and down just to make it so it's as easy as possible to actually remove these. Because if you can see right through here, these are very sharp, spiky um, sprues and you're going to have to remove these. So. Ideally, we don't want these at the height of the teeth. Uh, we want them kind of in a flat area that's easy to remove. So for the mandibular denture right here, you can see we're going to be going through and I'm going to be adding six sprues to it. You can see six. This is the same one we milled. Uh, so you can see six through here. So I like to do four on the outer border and then two on the inner border toward the, towards the lingual portion of the dentures. OK, just it, it helps with this not warping and making sure it stays steady throughout the whole print. So we're going to go hit the plus the play button in the top left corner, which will basically send it off for the calculations. And then we're going to go through and do the same thing for the upper one right here. So what we're going to be doing here is that you can see we're doing all and then I'm going to Ivoclar, Ivotion and then Ivotion upper, uh, because obviously the um, the delineation between the teeth and the gingiva color on these is going to be different for the upper and the lower. And it corresponds to the to the um, what you see in your three shape software, your ExoCAD software as well. So same here, we're going to click on upper batch, you just got to put something in here, I put gimmity test, that's my last name, it doesn't really matter. And the shade doesn't matter either. So double click on it again, you can see it automatically nests here. So right click, we're going to increase the processing area offset right here. 
Um, this one I'm going through specifics because um, I'll go through this in uh, the next video for uh, errors you might have with this. For that maxillary denture, we're gonna just do four. Uh, we're just gonna put them kind of all around. Don't put one on the posterior border because that's just extremely difficult to remove. And a lot of times you're gonna be removing some of the structure that you actually wanted to uh, capture in the actual final denture for your patient, okay? So now that these all went through, the way this works is a PM7 is a CNC machine, okay? What a CNC machine basically does is you're going to go through, you have a burr, so it's a subtractive manufacturing technique. It's not additive like a 3D printer is, it's subtractive. So your computer is going to go through and it's going to calculate all of the different paths for the different burrs that are going to be used throughout the entire milling process, okay? And you're going to see it's going to be hundreds of thousands of, of data points that it's calculating basically. And the thing is, if your computer calculates all of that and then it's going to send those written instructions basically to your printer and then your printer, or your, sorry, your milling unit in this case, and then your milling unit is going to execute on those commands, basically. So what we need to do is after we calculate all of this, it takes a little while for it to calculate. And that depends on the speed of your uh, your computer. And also one thing that I found is that it's actually very dependent on your RAM capacity and RAM speed as well. So kind of anecdotal on that. We need to make sure that this plan is actually going to be accurate. So we're going to click on view simulation up here on the top left. This is right next to our start calculation button that we clicked earlier. And we're going to take a look at this. So the way we're going to do, we're going to hit fast simulation over there on the right side. And this is going to simulate all of the different burrs and all of the different burr movements that it's going to go through in order to fabricate and mill this final denture. So goes pretty quickly through this. And you can see for this one, we're looking at it's about 280,000 individual movements that it's sending. So this is what we're looking for. You can see the green through here and the red. The red is generally going to be bad. Red means that the area that it's trying to mill is too small for the actual burr. Now we have a limited diameter of burrs uh, that we're using for this. For us, ours is 0.5 millimeters. So anything less than 0.5 millimeters, we're not actually able to get in those areas. So you're always going to see those red areas around the teeth. Obviously, I mean, there's nothing we can do for the embrasures and the anatomy of the teeth. But what we're looking for is any sort of red areas on the intaglio surface or large undercuts that have formed through it. So in this case, we didn't see any. So we said we're good to go for it. So we're going to go to NC Manager on the left side. And NC Manager is how we're actually going to take these 280,000 plus instructions, basically, that we just calculated on our computer. And we're going to send these to our PM7 milling unit. Okay. Now, the way we're going to do that for this one is, like I said, sometimes these have a, uh, or they always do have an RFID tag right here that you can just scan right here on your, uh, on your unit, as you can see right here. But in this case, if there's ever an issue with this getting attached to something else, and we can go through troubleshooting for that, sometimes you have to use what's called the RFID disk for it. So you'll peel off your uh, RFID tag. As you can see, I peeled off this one right here. Actually, I peeled off both of these. And then we're going to hold that RFID disk over the scanner. And then what we're going to do with that is then we're going to hold it over. We're going to click on RFID disk, right RFID disk right here. And it's going to basically attach it's basically going to link this uh job to this for to this puck so when we put it into our pm7 milling unit it's going to actually know what it's going to be doing and then we're going to click on nc file right there as well and that's going to what is what actually sends it to our milling unit okay so let's take a look at this maxillary one as well I've done this exact case a number of times, so I know it's going to be fine but I want to just show you kind of what you would be looking for if there is an issue with it and like I said, sometimes you'll get an error saying that it's unable to mill, in which case I'm going to have a, my next video goes through kind of some troubleshooting for that because there's some workarounds for it that doesn't involve just redesigning the whole denture. So right here, we can see red all, all around the teeth, which is fine. We can see a little bit of a red area in the, in the posterior left portion of the intaglio surface. That's fine. What we're looking for really with this is any super large undercuts. If you're using a designer with these that really knows what they're doing, uh, then generally speaking, you're not going to see too many issues with this. Okay, we're going to write the RFID uh, RFID disk, and then we're going to send click on NC file, which sends it to our printer. So no, sorry, milling unit. <laughs> I deal with 3D printers so much. I, I tend to just call everything a printer at this point. So once it's sent to our PM7 milling unit, we're now ready to go ahead and put our uh, pucks into the printer. And I'm going to go through how to do that right here.
So first off, you have to understand that there's two different torque wrenches that are going to be included with your Ivoclar PM7, one at 0.45 newton meters of torque and the other one at 2.8 newton meters of torque. The 2.8 one is going to be the one that we use for any sort of zirconia or Emacs that we're going to be milling. So we're going to be sticking to the 0.45 newton centimeter torque wrench for our dentures. So grab that one, you're going to place it into your uh, holder as is pretty self explanatory and torque it down. What's important with these Ivotion monolithic dentures is that you're going to be using the uh, the metal framework that does not have the cutout. So you can see right here that it fits perfectly in each one, and you're gonna to be torquing it down. And then at the very bottom of this, you can see that we have those are those RFID containers. So in a situation where either there's an issue with your RFID tag on your um, original puck, or uh, you're just you accidentally nested it to the wrong one. This is what you're going to be using and then obviously scan it just like you normally would right here. So now we're going to be good to go ahead and put this into our uh, milling unit, as you can see here. And then I always like to have it in automatic mode and you can see that it's been linked to your job that we've sent over. So if you're not seeing this screen right here where you can see uh, the jobs that are nested in the dentures that you're going to be milling, um, then something's gone wrong along the way. Um, you haven't uh, properly linked it to that RFID tag most likely because the file gets sent to the milling unit and that RFID tag of either that container or the actual uh, the actual sticker that was originally on it, that's going to be what tells your PM7, hey, this is the job that I'm actually going to be milling right now. So now that we have it all done, you can see here, this is how you eject it, just select whichever one that's done, hit eject, and then pull it out. And this is what it looks like. So these monolithic monolithic dentures are phenomenal. Um, as you can see, they're gorgeous. The gingival margin is truly mind blowing. Uh, for me, uh, I still uh, every single time I see one, I'm just blown away by how perfect it is. Um, because it, it is truly monolithic in every sense of the word. So that goes through how we actually mill it for a monolithic Ivotion denture from Ivoclar uh, here on your PM7. I'm going to go through some troubleshooting and some further videos or some things just to help understand this process because it's a little bit cumbersome at times, especially as you're starting out. And especially if you're used to a 3D printing workflow, there's a lot of similarities, but there's actually, especially with these monolithic uh, versions, there's a lot of small intricacies that make it quite different uh, than, a mil uh, than a printing process would be. So it's important that you understand the whole process. If you have any questions, please reach out. Um, like I said, my name is Dr. Michael Gamini. So thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye.